Badisha, um, I'm just going to be showing you um, just quickly one of the uh, or some, the two simulations that I've done just to, to to kind of show you that they're working because I know in class uh, they weren't able to work. So um, I've got them labeled on this computer Morning Peak Wisdom model and the other one is the um, Morning Peak Solution. So just to show you the Morning Peak Wisdom model. And I'm running the student version, that's why all these words are coming up. And I'll only run it for a short amount of time, um, but in particular, uh, if you notice that there's a lot of action going on down here, uh, the school is just in here, and it's getting quite a lot of traffic, and the, um, the traffic that I did, uh, the way that it's going, I measured it myself, I stood at this corner and I, I recorded it. Um, and so you can see that there's quite a lot there. As well, you'll see up along here, there's queues. Now I said in class that this uh, does worse. It depends on the simulation and the seed, pretty much. Here you'll see um, that it's getting pretty long queues, but um, in the morning time, those can, those can clear. It's kind of more of a random thing. Um, you'll notice throughout the simulation that we'll probably get queues along here or here, and particularly up along here. Um, again, as happens in, in the real environment. Um, this is a particularly busy road. Um, it leads to Blanchardstown Village, and the queues will go all the way down. And as a matter of fact, um, in, in the real system, the queues go right down and into the village, and um, then start queuing up along this road as well, and our road that goes further in into the village. This road is um, the motorway, and that gets queues which are usually cleared pretty quick because there's three three um, lanes which feed out and so the queue builds up but the queue gets gets cleared pretty quick as opposed to this one here and this. This um, lane here in the model um, often doesn't get quite as clogged up as it does in the uh, in real life. In real life it'll sometimes clog up all the way back to here continue clogging on. Um, vehicles disappear. The only errors I get is when there's a vehicle like this, which is indicating to turn. Oh no, this one isn't indicating to turn. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, it disappears. Um, those are the main errors, that I, the, the only actual errors that I've ever gotten uh, in running it. And so uh, not focusing on a route from, let's say, here to here hasn't caused me any, hasn't caused me any problems at all. Um, I can show you the the error output file. Uh, let's see, morning peak solution. Um, morning peak, and we're re running it with a seed of nine. Error file. Okay. Um, so the only the only errors are sixty seconds of waiting after lane change uh, for lane change. So those are the only errors that I've ever seen happen from it so it doesn't seem to cause any any sort of problem. Okay and the next model just to show you is the peak solution. So I'll just run that. Um, and you'll notice that this one's got the bus, the bus stops and the routes and uh, the bus will head up to here around it takes this um this particular route because I noticed that in the um, the newer model, when there's less traffic, this particular road clogs up less. Um, and so to take attention away from this road, any extra traffic off that I can, I, I just left the vehicles off that road. And here you can see one vehicle that came from the Clancilla area, which is heading in here. And again, as I said in class, um, the vehicles in order to get into uh, this, in this housing estate would have to get through another entrance and I wasn't able to do the map big enough uh, to include those entrances uh, for the simple reason that um, with the student version the map size has to is uh, very limited and so this particular size is the maximum uh, map size for a student version. Now here you can see what I was mentioning in class that this uh, particular lane even with the reduced traffic still gets clogged up um, all the way back, and so I'm not too sure what 
what I would have to do in order to get rid of that. You probably have to start making changes to the road network. Uh, at the moment it lets vehicles pass even when there's a red light. This is just a yield sign so it's a, a, um, a small turn which lets them in. Um, and you'll notice, especially back here, that there's much less um, action going on, uh, much, much less vehicles turning in. There's still vehicles going up to the um, to the business park back here, to the, the offices back here, as, as was happening. And uh, you'll still notice that there are still some queues that are happening in this one as well, and back here as well. Um, it's a little bit harder to to affect the traffic that's um, going on with uh, with roundabouts, obviously, um, it's a little bit less. There, but there are less less queues, and as I showed in class with statistics, the um, the the overall performance uh, is much better. Um, and if you want to see, let's see the solution here. File for C nine. Um, and again, 60 seconds of waiting for lane change. So those are the only er changes that I, or the only errors that I've seen. When it comes to actual changes in the lights, I didn't make any changes in these light sequences at all. I made some changes to these ones just to, um, just because right here there's a sensor, um, and to reflect the fact that it's getting less traffic, I had it, um, uh, I had this light turn green less, and that's. Pretty much all, and for a, a slightly shorter duration, that's pretty much the only changes that I made. Um, besides of including the bus routes and uh, reducing the amount of traffic, and um, that's that's it. The um, the other things that you were asking for a class table, I will uh, do up now, and I'll send that on to you um, a little bit later.